Hi, I'm Stuart from Hi-Fi Pig. We're here at the MOC for High End Munich 2023. I'm here with Oliver Thomas, who is the Commercial Director of PMC, and Elliot White, who is the Product Development Manager for PMC, and specifically for the Prodigy range of loudspeakers that we were introduced to earlier in the day. Now, we go to a lot of press conferences at these kind of shows, and they tend to follow a format where the product is introduced and at the end there's a big reveal of the price and frankly I went that's an incredible price for a PMC speaker that packs everything of a PMC speaker we'll leave the price till the end of the video and we'll do the big reveal here as well so uh, what we have is the Prodigy 1 is the new bookshelf model it has a five and a quarter inch woofer and a 27 millimeter tweeter. It's a compact but lively, exciting design. And then next to it is Bigger Brother is the Prodigy 5, and that is the floor standard model. Again, compact, sharing a lot of the same components. And it's kind of like a real room filler. It's a bit of a party speaker. So where did the uh, idea for the Prodigy come from? Obviously, it's a, a good value speaker, and we're going to give the prices at the end. Where does that concept come from? We wanted to, I think, pull on a lot of the technologies that we have obviously developed in the 25 series and the FACT series and bring those to a wider audience. So yes, we'll get onto the prices, they're uh, enticing. Um, but yeah, we wanted to put that into two small compact products that have most of the core PMC technologies and PMC developments all in the same package. So the key PMC features are the ATL or Advanced Transmission Line, which uh, you can see from the cutaway models that we have on display, highlighting what is in the box. And there's a variety of different acoustic principles employed within an ATL design, but uh, it's all about cleaning up the mid-range through absorption materials in the cabinet and utilising the rear-radiated energy from the LF drive unit to boost the lower frequencies. And how does the ATL differ from a normal transmission line? Uh, probably in about three main ways. So the acoustic materials, the foam which we use inside the cabinet is bespoke to us as a very high specification design which allows all of our speakers to be manufactured very consistently but it also improves the efficiency of the ATL. Then we've got things like other acoustic principles like in the floor standard we have developed a Helmholtz resonator absorber within the transmission line which also absorbs some frequencies. Um, again allowing us to get more bass out of the cabinet. And then the third and final thing is a big development which is laminaire, which is the, uh, the device that you see at the vent exit of most of new PMC uh, speakers, which is controlling airflow, reducing turbulence, which uh, yeah, again improves the efficiency of the ATL. So the, the new one there for me is the Helmholtz resonator. So tell us about that. So in the same way that when you blow across the top of a milk bottle, it resonates at a certain frequency, okay. that is a Helmholtz resonance. Um, what we use that for is in a much more damped method and we tune it to one specific frequency which would be sort of like um, too, too high, too, too greater a frequency or too greater a level of that frequency in the transmission line. So we tune that out and using the Helmholtz resonator to do that means that we can use less foam within the line. The more foam you use, the better damped it is, but the more constricting it can be which reduces the bass output. So by using the Helmholtz resonator in combination with it means we get more bass output. So they are fairly compact speakers, as we'll see when we cut away to them, but how low do they go each? How the floor standard, The floor standard first, and then the stand mount. So the floor standard has the slightly longer transmission line, and it has a greater um, volume of the cabinet. That goes down to 35 hertz. Oh, wow. And the bookshelf, um, slightly shorter, obviously a real compact speaker, but it still goes down to 50 hertz. Who do you expect to buy these? Are they an entry-level product or can people upgrade to these and where do you see them going from these speakers? I mean for sure it's an entry-level product now for PMC and that's what's so nice about it is it does make our products more accessible to more people so I'm hoping we'll be seeing kind of new customers that wouldn't otherwise be considering PMC. One of the things that I took away from the press conference and obviously in your literature it's from the studio to the front room yeah. that's basically the only difference is the aesthetics, I think you said, of the different speakers. So will you be doing a studio version of these as well? Well, the studio version of these kind of already exists. We're looking at it. That's the, that's the passive studio stand mount, and that will probably be used as a near field in studios. 
So over to Elliot White now, who is the product development manager, <laughs> and he's going to talk to us a little bit in more detail about the speakers and what makes the speakers up. Um, I don't know very much about the speakers at all, I'm, and readers of Hi5 Pig will know that I'm not a techie person. But I'm going to ask a few questions, and I, I hope that Elliot will better tell you in layman's terms a little bit more about the speakers. So. The thing I picked up on with a lot of the PMC speakers, if not all the PMC speakers, is the laminaire yes. that is at the mouth of the ATL. Yeah. So tell us a little bit more about that, how it works, what it does. So the laminaire technology is a way of making the flow of air in and out of the cabinet much more smooth and much more laminar, hence the name, which is reducing the turbulence and therefore you're not getting background chuffing and you can play the speaker louder without introducing extra coloration. These are not very expensive speakers at all and I heard them earlier on and the drivers sound great, the imaging is great on them. What compromises have you had to make, if any, on the drivers specifically? On the drivers specifically, very few. The tweeter is a 27mm soft dome. Uh, and it is the same tweeter that we use in some of our professional products. So they're proven with uh, studios throughout the world. It's a similar story with the base driver, to be honest. It's a long throw, soft, natural fibre cone. And it's used in our CI products, which are recognised quite broadly for being the reference for Atmos installations Atmos, yeah. in uh, professional recording studios. Um, so it's a drive unit we're very familiar with. We really like it because um, it's got a very clear mid-range because of the inverted dust cap and uh, it it's works really well within a transmission line. And you've gone for a two-way design in both the floor stander and the stand mount. That Does that make for a, a more simple crossover and what have you done with the crossover? Crossover, yeah, so obviously yeah, only two drivers versus three does make a simple crossover, um, but it's not, we haven't, we haven't compromised, we've gone with the same um, nice sharp 12 dB slopes that we would use on, on other products. And the crossover really is one of the key things that if you get the crossover wrong, the speaker's going to be bad. No, it doesn't matter how good the speaker itself is, if the crossover is wrong. So it's one of, it's one of the key areas where we spend a lot of time tweaking, both listening and measuring. Uh, to arrive on what we see as the, the final values for the crossover. You measure obviously and then do you listen or once you've measured is that it? How important is the listening process? Um, we, do, we do both. The listening is extremely important. The measurements are also extremely important. Um, you have to kind of work with both in tandem. Neither of those can tell you the whole story. Um, you have to be looking at the measurements saying yes of course we want it to measure good but at the end of the day the customers are not measuring they're listening so the listening is the absolutely key part and we do that on every single speaker of course that we design but also every single speaker that we manufacture is listened to oh, wow. by a um, engineer in our factory when we finish developing the product we'll produce a set of reference speakers which we are our golden sample we will retain one in the design department under lock and key and we will then also take one into the factory. And every time we build a batch, the engineers in the factory will get out that reference, put it up side by side, listen to every single speaker and check it sounds exactly the same as that reference. Tell us a little bit about the cabinet on the uh, Prodigy range. Okay, so cabinet, it's a uh, high density MDF and we have the fortunate uh, kind of byproduct of a transmission line is that you have all these panels inside, which naturally just makes it a very, very well braced cabinet. Mm -hmm. um, it's a very highly damped and especially of course the foam, um, yeah, it's a, it's a cabinet design that we've inspired obviously by our, our existing history with uh, our other ranges. We've been able to refine it down to uh, a much more achievable product. Okay, so we said that we'd leave the price to the very end of this video and I think we've covered pretty much about everything about the speakers, yeah? Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Absolutely. So I'm going to let... I listened to these earlier on and I thought they were fantastic. I was at the back of the room and I turned to Peter Thomas who was at the back of the room too and the room was absolutely filled with journalists from all over the world and it was packed but you could still tell that the bass was really an amazing sound and not just for the money and I'm going to let Oliver tell you how much these speakers are because I, I was gobsmacked. The uh, bookshelf, the Prodigy 1, is £1,250 ink vat in the shops, and the Prodigy 5 will be £1,995 ink vat for the pair. 
from the shops. Getting wild or hot, they will fly out, I think, and they do sound great.